everybody, Kieran here, the founder of Thunder, and I thought it'd be a really good idea today to go live just before tea time. Um, it was, I, don't, I think it's a good idea to go before tea time, but whatever the time of the day it is, I think it's a great idea to go live and just share our struggles, uh, what parents are going through right now, have a chat. And I've got a very special guest called Claire, who's who's written lots of books, and she's really, really like passionate about empowering children's lives. So I'm going to bring her onto the live right now and we're going to have a chat, share pretty much our struggles. It's a live funder meeting. It's a live meeting with Claire about what she does. And I thought rather than just meet virtually, let's go live and hopefully parents can watch this and tune in. And uh, yeah, if you're watching it back later, later on tonight with a glass of wine, you might get some golden nuggets and tips for homeschooling and home educating your child. Plus, I know I am, and I know Claire will probably do this, but I'm going to leave lots of free resources and activities below the comments for parents to use throughout the rest of the week uh, as you drain, um, with, as you lose energy with homeschooling. So I'm going to bring Claire on. She's going to explain what she does, and it's a real, real meeting. It's not scripted, and it'd be nice to meet Claire. So uh, hello, Claire. <laughs> Hi, it's great to be here. <laughs> How are you doing? All right. I am good. Thank you, Kieran. Thank you so much for uh, inviting me on to your live show with your community. This is exciting. It's okay, Claire. It's lovely to meet you. I know this is the first time, pretty much I think it is. I know you was on my feed on Facebook and it's the first time we've ever met. And I've seen you sharing your book, What's Behind You. I've seen you sharing lots of tips, lots of advice, lots of interaction with parents who are homeschooling. We're both parents ourselves. Um, so I've, I haven't planned anything really. So it's really just about introducing yourself really. And then I'll introduce myself and then going through some real struggles, what's happening right now and how we, how we can help each other and parents. Absolutely. That would be a pleasure. So, yes. Yeah, so um, my name is Claire Ford. I'm an expert educator. I've been teaching for over, well, I keep saying 15 years, but I realized this morning, Kieran, when I said it in another interview, I was like, do you know what? It's actually more like 20. <laughs> <laughs> so Angie. anyway, it keeps me young. Um, so I've been educating for a long time and, I'll, you know, I've got two older t teenagers. My boys are 19 and 16, so I'm a bit further, you know, in a different phase than you are, which I think is actually really good. We can we can talk into that from both our perspectives because you've got younger children. Um, and, you know, I've been also tutoring um, for, for many, many years and have set up during lockdown when it started in March, um, you know, my home education hub to support parents who are educating at home. Now, I just want to kind of put this on the table if it's all right. Um, I don't necessarily advocate personally any particular kind of schooling. I have had some homeschoolers who've got very frustrated in the home education hub if I've been talking about the curriculum or about things that have been going on in the classroom, right? Mm -hmm. So for me personally, it doesn't matter to me if you're homeschooling, no schooling, flexi schooling, forest schooling, world schooling, global schooling, right? Child led learning, or if you're going to Eton, or if you're boarding schooling, or whatever. That is not something that I get involved yeah. in a conversation in because my okay. thing is all about doing whatever you need to do to unlock your child's potential. That's it. Yes, that's it. Let me put that. Let me put that. Unlock your child's. <laughs> Type quick. Oh. Okay, yes let's yeah. put that let's put that so let's talk about that unlock your child's full potential so that's what that's really close and it's strange because i believe in the law of attraction and when positive people are out there you attract people that are like-minded and there's a reason why i stumbled across your post because we're all busy right now when we're growing and, and, and scaling a business and we're trying to develop a business through lockdown and all mm. these challenges and juggling lots of plates as well as parenting mm. and i come across you and i thought I heard you on the live and I thought, what a lovely lady, what a <laughs> lovely lady to, to reach out to. And I thought, well, let's connect more with people who, who share the passion about empowering children and mm. locking children's full potential. Everybody has an opinion, but I think what makes our, our heart sings, correct me if I'm wrong, Claire, is, is making a positive difference to children's lives every day. And, mm. and uh, you know, that I think that's really important to us. So, yeah, home learning, unlocking children's full potential, and and just doing what we can to help parents and children right now um and that was a a lovely insight so obviously from my side as well you don't know about me so um i'll just give you a quick overview loads of people do ar around on my page and you're on my page but from me to you i mean i started 
funder 15 years ago um, to with uh, one man and a bag and a dog um, going around to schools for free, inspiring children to get children active, teaching children. After I passed out with me with me PGC and teach, now we're going to go into primary school teaching. And teaching in four walls wasn't for me. I'm dyslexic. I'm always on the go. I need to be in a creative space. And we started going around schools, signing up schools, teaching them physical education and physical activities, creative play, um, teaching the fundamental skills, the fundamental movement skills. That's where Funder comes from. Mm -hmm. uh, Funder's the name of our character. Uh, we're a multi-award winning. We partner 96 schools at the minute. We go into schools teaching PE and teaching the Funder way, which is a system we've created and a philosophy um, that really thinks outside the box, goes outside the box to engage inspire motivate and empower all children not just the child what the curriculum says it should inspire it's about all, inspiring all children and then we pre pretty much after 15 years now we're award-winning officially recognized by the queen recognized as one of the northwest most exciting companies but mm -hmm. during the lockdown right now claire we're moving office so today i'm in an open space because we're moving office and i've got so much resources and activities and books and 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 things that are online. And what I'm struggling with, Claire, is, is giving that to, uh, getting it in front of parents, sharing the message, sharing what we've got, not monetizing from it. Basically, I just want to give, 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 give and help parents out so much. And I know you do. So it's it's literally just, just I thought about how can I contact Claire? How can I connect? Because I'm not used to this getting out there and I, I just want to connect with more professionals, more experts like yourself, so that we could create a, a community. I know you've got a community already. That's fantastic. The Home Education Hub and, and, and what you've got going on. But the message is, how can, we, how can we collaborate? How can we get others to help? Because parents and children, before we go into tips and advice, need us right now. So what can we do? That's right. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm you know, creating a movement, <laughs> all right? I'm creating a movement which goes beyond academic success. Yeah. Now, I've got certificates on the back of my wall, you know, I've been, I've got two degrees, I've been through university and all the rest of it. So it's not that I don't value that. Yeah. It's not that I'm pushing to one side, it to one side. I'm not saying I'm an educational disruptor. Yeah. But I'm talking about expanding those walls. And like you're saying, you know, I always say as well, a classroom doesn't have four walls. Yeah. The world is your classroom. The yeah. mind is your classroom. The universe is your classroom, yeah. right? So I'm all about this expansion and going beyond into yeah. the infinite field of possibility, right? Yeah. And this is where I get excited. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Um, I'm creating this movement um, and starting it with my Switched On Academy, which is launching next week on Monday, which is really exciting, um, which is, like you, all about switching on learning. But yeah. it might be interesting to think about why a learner switched off, all right? And I'd like to tell you a very brief story, which happened to me just yesterday, chatting to a student of mine, and it made me really sad. And I was going to do a live about this in my group, but I'll do a, I'll, I'll, I'll mention it now, if I may. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it, it's a plea. It's a plea to parents. I don't want your child to say to you what this child said to me yesterday. And seriously, it nearly broke my heart, right? So I'm gonna call him Freddy for the sake of safeguarding and all of that. Anyway, Freddy comes along, I'm chatting to him. How was Christmas? How was New Year? Da, 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 chatting about that. You know, I said to him, well, you know, uh, what did you get? Like, did you have fun? So we're chatting about that. And then uh, we're doing some work together. And I said, okay, we're doing a, a fact file, practicing information text, you know, and uh, what do you want to do it on? Because I know that you're interested in lots of things, right? And yeah, when he'd yeah. come to me a while back, um, uh, he told me a little story, which I'll tell you. Yep. So if I just backtrack, when when Freddie came to me before, he came in once, he had a really schmally face, he had a good old mood on, right? You know how they stomp in? I thought, oh, this is going to be a long hour, Kieran. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, okay, Freddie, what's going on? He's like, oh, I'm so cross. I'm like, why? He said, the teachers won't answer my questions. This was when they were allowed to be back in school. I thought, oh, what questions have you been asking? He said, well, I was asking her about the Big Bang. He said, I want to know how the world was created. And I thought, fantastic. I've just written a course on cosmology in my Switched On Academy in the quantum curriculum for, for children and teens, right? Yeah, I was like, yeah. 
the universe has sent me a sign. I'm like, amazing. So I was really, really excited. So when Freddie came back again this week, and I got this in the back of my mind, and I'm thinking, oh, we're going to do cosmology, right? We're going to yeah, do yeah. cosmology. How the world was created. Like, what an amazing thing to do. Because we can, because we're not in school, right? Yeah, so I'm, yeah. all, I'm all hyped up, and I'm like, right, Freddie, so what are we going to do your fact file on? He's like, I don't know. I'm like, okay. Uh, well, what are some of the things you'd like to know more about? I don't know. And he was so negative. And I said, well, what are the, some of the things that you're interested in? If you could ask anything in the world, what would you ask? I don't really want to know anything. He said, I already know. He said, I don't know what to, I don't know what to ask if I don't know it. And I've already found out about everything that I want to find out about. <gasps> Age 11. Oh, wow. Age 11. Uh, oh, my God. I said, but you you don't know everything about everything that you found out about already right there's yeah. still loads of questions that you can ask now the reason i'm making this point kieran is a really important reason it's because he was switched off as a learner he yeah. had forgotten how to be inspired he'd forgotten how to be curious he'd forgotten how to ask a question he'd gone back into that school environment and he'd been so tested and you know, base testing on where are you at now and da 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 da, da. And, and it made me sad. It made yeah. me really sad because before I knew what he was like. Yes. So I had this and so I thought, okay, it, this is triggering me, but I'm not, I'm not going to let it. So we just chatted away and did other things. And eventually, oh, eventually it came out that he wanted to do about, you know, creatures of the deep and this strange shark that he'd heard of that was, mm -hmm. you know, ugly and lived right on the bottom of the seabed and whatever. And I don't yeah. know about it. So I said, brilliant, do that because I don't know about it and then I'll learn. So we eventually found something. But how sad, Kieran, that yeah, he yeah. switched off at the age of 11 and he thought that he already knew as much information as he needed to know. At the age of 11, why do you think that is, Claire? Why do you think his children switch off? I think it's because something that you touched on about, and that I do outside academics, it's because they haven't been encouraged to ask these questions. And it's also because they haven't been asked what it is that they want to learn. And I would encourage and implore parents who are home right now to just put some of that stuff that you might be getting back from school to one side and Great. actually look at the brilliance and the uniqueness of the person sitting in front of you and ask them what would you like to do what would you like to learn if you could learn about anything what would you love to learn because yes. here's the thing children are born innate learners Children are yeah. born innately curious. Otherwise, we'd have died out by now. Yep, yep. And I agree, Claire. I totally agree with what you just said about just stop. And it's okay to pause. Just stop as a parent with all the stress and hustle and emotions that's going on right now. Because I spoke to so many parents who's run our office, our team's dealt with, and they're like, oh, my God, I feel like I'm going to fail as a parent. I feel like there's so much pressure on me. I feel like the school isn't giving me enough. But it's okay to stop. And like what you just said is forget about the core subjects, forget about the curriculum for a minute and just just kind of like ask your child what makes their heart sing. That's what it. do they want to, to learn? What makes their heart sing? And, you, you know, you've got that good time now, that quality time. I know they might be juggling work at home. But I feel like if you switch off the mobile devices, if you switch off the computers and all the distractions around you and just ask your child and discover, find, have this time to discover what makes your child's heart sing. Because I used to get turned off by the academic sat behind a desk with a textbook, learning maths, learning English, learning science. And to be honest with you, the times tables and maths scares me today. I can help you with that. <laughs> I know it scares me, and 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 I'm just so not numbers driven. I'm so not down to the facts, down to the data, down to numbers. It, it scares me, and, and 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 maybe it is because I'm dyslexic. But I'd, I'd urge parents to to just the schools that I've seen some of the packs the schools sending home, and I'm not joking. They had number blocks in, and they had. And no disrespect to teachers because they're doing a fantastic job. They're under a lot of pressure. But they had so many old school resources. And they work sometimes. But all traditional resources that my granddad used when he was at school, they might as well have sent an abacus home. Yes. 
Yes, and actually an abacus is quite fun. <laughs> it is, it is, but it's, I know what on. you're saying. I know what you're saying. We have to move on. We have to move ahead. And actually, one of those things as well that, that I just want to touch on that you mentioned is, you know, getting away from those distractions. Now, if that's very difficult, or if you have a busy household, or you, you have a partner who's working, or you have a teenager who's upstairs playing loud music, or whatever it is, go for a walk. Take your kids out for a drive. If we're not allowed to walk anymore, and even the parks are shut down or whatever, Yep. Like go for a drive because you cannot be on your phone when you're driving. You yep. cannot be on your computer. Don't let them take anything in the car and literally put some nice relaxing music on, not necessarily, you know, really loud music to sing along to, kind of relaxing, calming music. Tap into those delta waves, change the frequency, yep. change the frequency up, and then you will have a different vibrational conversation. Yes. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Go outside of your, your comfort zone, get outside and you know, stop stop stressing. So, I mean, I'm lucky because I, I, I've I've got my missus who's at home who's got the little ones and you've got older children. But there must be some parents right now, Claire, who I got quite emotional yesterday on, on, on a live and uh, thinking about these children who's, who's not got much space at home, mm. who's got primary school children at home. The teachers have given them a resource pack and they're doing some virtual learning. But we've got eight, let's have it right, we've got eight to ten plus weeks of this home education and homeschooling where parents have to scramble at everything they've got to be and do the best they can do. That's be the best they can do. Oh, and do. what tips would you give them from, from your side in terms of a parent, in terms of, of, of the position they're in right now, from your experience and your knowledge and working in schools, out of schools, with learners, with not, what, mm -hmm. what advice would you, would you give parents right now? Yeah, so I mean, I pop lots of stuff like this in the home education hub in the first lockdown, right? Um, um, and there are a couple of things that I would I would personally advise and invite people to consider. They may trigger some parents because it's not everybody's cup of tea. Um, and so I'd just like to caveat before I offer this advice that you absolutely have to do what's right for you and your family, right? You know, you may have neurodiverse children, you may have children who are very different age groups. There are some people in, in the hub, and I don't know how they're coping. They've got like three-year-olds, seven-year-old, 13-year-old, and a 15-year-old, and, and, and it's like, wow, they're all doing different key stages, they've got different interests, you know, they've got, I mean, they, they're on computers at different times, they're up half the night, up early in the morning, like, so so this is the caveat look at your own family situation there is not a one-size-fits-all approach but I can give you a couple of little things to consider so the first thing is always about having a realistic expectation now here's the thing the stuff that schools are sending home and private schools even more so it's because they have to it's because they're assessed. It's because the teachers are assessed. It's because they are afraid that Ofsted will come and say, you haven't done your job. So they've got a different motive for sending the work home than you have for doing it. They're not necessarily sending the work home so that your particular child in your house right now will be an amazing adult. That's not the motivation of the school. That's the first thing. I agree with that. It's to keep them up to their progress levels where they were already attaining at. Some schools I've visited have thrown the progress out the window right now. Ofsted's not going to visit until later next year. Uh, but still, they're sending out, rather than focusing on the physical, the health, the well-being, the personal development, that really can help that child succeed and give them that resourcefulness, that reflectiveness and resilience mm. to, to succeed in life. Mm. They're sending home academic work, they're sending home spellings, they're sending home that's English what maths. They do. That's yeah. what they do at school. Agree. And Agree. This, this is why people like you and people like me, you know, are so needed right now because, um, but I, let me get back to my tips and then we'll carry on. Yeah, with yeah. carry on. Yeah. So, so there isn't a one size fits all approach. So the first thing is manage expectations. So what I suggest, I, I've done, I've got, I think, 12 weeks worth of planning in the hub, which I used to do on a Sunday called Planning the Night, Planning the Week Ahead. Yep. There are videos there for free. Anyone can go and watch Planning the Week Ahead, right? And I always start with open your diary and start with you, the parent. Yep. What do you have to show up for to put food on the table and keep a roof over your family's head? That's yep. a non-negotiable. Yep. regardless of whatever the school is sending home, no one cares, right? 
So if you've got a really important meeting or you've got a client call or you're trying to, you know, sell something or create something or you've got, you know, a web designer meeting, whatever it is you need to do to pivot your business, to get money into your bank account, to feed your children, that takes yeah. priority. We're on Maslow's pyramid, right? Agree. And Agree. We're on the lowest rung. We're on survival. We're not up here on, on spiritual growth. We have to have the lowest bit in place. We have to have yep. a foundation. Foundations, yeah. The yep. reason that parents get stressed is because you're trying to work further up the pyramid when all the bits on the bottom is a moving part, yep. right? Yep. We as parents cannot emotionally show up for our children if we're worrying about how to put food on the table, if we're worrying about relatives who are sick, if we're worrying yep. about how we're going to earn money. And these are serious concerns. Real life concerns, yes. Yeah, I agree. So manage expectations. Understand that until all of that is settled and in place, understand that you aren't going to be the best at working out quadratic equations because you're thinking how the f-u-c-k am i going to actually you know pay the heating bill next month yes yeah so, yep. so please be kind to yourself in that way so manage expectations slot out in your diary and with your partner if you live with a partner what they need to do as well and you will find that there are some bits that are filled in where you're not available for your children let me say that again. You are allowed to not be available for your children. Mm -hmm. They do not need 24 hour care. When your child goes to school, if they're a kind of middle of the road type student, they're lucky to even have a conversation one to one with an adult anytime throughout the day. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. They're yeah, yeah. ignored at school. Yeah. <laughs> Yep. You do not have to turn up for your child all day long. Mm -hmm. So block out what you need to do. Block out what your partner needs to do. Then look at the gaps and work out who does what when, right? So, right, you're free to make lunch on Tuesday. I'll do tea on Thursday. You take the dog for a walk on Friday. Put it in, right? Yep. Job share. Job share the kind of household chore type thing so that your house is up and running smoothly and you're earning money. Yes. Yep, yep. After that is when you put in slots for lessons. Yep. And, you know, that can be 30 minutes, 20 minutes. It's not like you need an hour after an hour after an hour. Now, if people are having to show up for Facebook Lives or not Facebook Lives, for um, live lessons, classroom meet, whatever it is, some you might need to see which child takes priority if you've only got one computer, right? Yes. Yep. Is my son's GCSE more important than my toddler's nursery story time? Well, yep. obviously, yes, it is. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yep. You need to be, you need to prioritize. And it's not favoring one child over another. It's just being logical. Yep. Yep. So you've got to take the yep. emotion away. Yeah. And you've got to be really logical. <laughs> yes. Into yep. a really logical, organized mindset. And then you will see that you've got space for family time, for well being time, for relaxation time, walking, put yep. all those kinds of things in. Then, oh, we can do a little bit of maths on Thursday from three till four. And that's yes. what we'll do. Yes. And don't go off other people's uh, agendas. Absolutely not. You know. And, you know, if even that is all impossible because you've got six different kids of different ages and they're running around like mad, well, in some ways you've got to get more organized, but get them to do some of the jobs and reward them, pay them, like get some kind of little system going where they can put tokens in a jar or whatever in yeah. a jar and they can earn rewards for yeah. free time, for computer time, for stuff like this, right? Yeah. Yeah. Get yeah. systems up and running which yeah. work for you to, mm -hmm. to stay sane. Factor in, right? If I've got a meeting, they're going in front of the telly. So yeah. what? It has to happen. Yeah. yeah, real real life parenting. I mean, six to eight weeks, maybe ten weeks, maybe longer. You know, it's it's people say, Oh, me my child's gonna fall behind, my child's yeah. gonna No, it's 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 they, they learn through real life learning, they learn from being at home and bring out the life skills, bring out the old traditional skills, bring out the stuff that children don't do today at school, them old traditional skills, marbles, you know. Bring out the old marble games. Bring out the old uh, tiddlywinks. Bring out the old, you know, top and whip if you've still got one of them. Borrow your dad's shoelaces. 
<laughs> the old traditional games that we used to play as not yeah. me, but I know about my, my mum and dad used to introduce me to the two of them, you know, snakes and ladders. Mm. Just them social interaction games that because children are missing out on being socially interactive. So how can we encourage that around the home, throw the academics out the windows? How can they get active? How can they get socially interactive? How can we develop their mindset and those 21st century skills? How can we develop those traditional skills and, and help your child grow mm. and nurture them? We yeah. do that anyway. But. And you, you can timetable that in, you know? So not everybody's stuff, that's not everybody's cup of tea, but like no. work to each other's strengths, with which whoever you've got in the house with you, yeah. right? And say, okay, so, you know, you love art, even if it's to an older child, right? Please go and manage the art corner over there. You can do whatever you like. I'm covering the floor in, in this and, you know, the walls in that and just do whatever you like. And I'm going to go on to Zoom and I'm going to do my client calls and you're in charge of art. Off you go. Yes. And yes. do you know what? If you give children responsibility, do you know what they do? They step up and they yeah. take it. Yeah, they grow. They <laughs> step up and grow. Learned, years of, you have your monitors in the class. Go and send a message. Go and do this. Go and tidy that. Go and put this away. Go and do that. They love it. Yep, yep, yep. You and don't that's have it. To do everything. No, that's it. I seen a parent the other day, and I thought, what a what a good idea. Just using a bit of initiative. The child was helping dad uh, bookkeeping, so he were organising the receipts for the mm -hmm. business. He had them there bookkeeping. Fantastic. Real life skills. Mm. And I'm thinking that's 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 fantastic. That that's that's brilliant. And, yeah. I, and but but the parents who are struggling now, the parents who are emotionally drained, they're at home. The kids are bouncing off the walls. The packs run out what the schools have sent to home on Monday because there's, there's there's a pack of resources there. There's online memes, teams, whatever they're using. What one big takeaway would you give for a parent right now who's who's absolutely banging their head against the fridge door? Um, I mean, I would suggest that, you know, they sit down with their kids and they have like a, a little family meeting, right? And I would suggest that that parent is honest because children can smell bullshit a mile away. Yeah. So if you're bumbling through your day going, oh, everything's fine, and then, you know, you're actually slamming doors and <laughs> yep. drinking the wine, they know everything isn't fine. So have yep. a chat with them and actually open up this line of communication and say, right, this school learning stuff isn't working. What do we like? What don't we like? What did we like from last time? What didn't we like? What do we wish we had more of? What do we wish we did less of? And yeah. be honest with them and say, do you know what? I'm not a morning person. If you yeah. get up and you're shouting at me in the morning, right? Yeah. <laughs> I can't hear you. It's too much. Yes. Let yeah. me have yeah. my coffee and then come and ask me what the problem is, right? So Correct. be honest with them. Tell them, you know, what you need to do, how much time you have. Yeah. What, work out what you love doing. What are you passionate about? If yeah. you're passionate, you don't realize you're learning. That's it. That's right, it. so you can yep. go on a, a nature walk. I said to you know, go on a nature walk, take a little bag, collect things. Yep. Come yep. back, make a collage. You can do painting with twigs and feathers and things. Yep. And then you can even research some of it. If you've got a scientist in your family, well, what feather does this? What bird has this feather? Let's yep. look yep. It up. Can we find it? Yep. You know, what tree has this leaf? Yep. Right. Yep. So you can bring thing. You can bring the outside in. Yep. Bring the outside in, you know, in case we got get locked down, you can't go outside. Yep. And, you know, and ask curious questions. You could even have a little a thing, which I recommend, which is really easy, and it's called window gazing. Yep. <laughs> right? And all it is is you sit there quietly, and for the parent, you're like, oh, thank God for that. But this is the game, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You have to sit there with your drink. It's, it's a bit of mindfulness, really. You sit there with your drink, and you all gaze out of the window. And you stay silent for like two minutes or something. Yeah. And then afterwards, you discuss what it is you saw, what you felt, what you heard, right? Yeah. And yeah. it's window gazing, and it's opening up discussion around mindfulness, but it's also opening up curious questions. So you could look outside the window and you say, "Well, I wonder why the moon's that shape tonight," or, you know, "Why is the sky grey?" Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Ask curious questions. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's where learning starts. And let it be child-led. Let the child use their imagination and, yes. and create their own learning and just guide it, be the facilitator, you know, rather than the teacher. But we've we've got Michelle watching and we've got some some parents watching. I mean, it's it's always tough with Facebook at the minute, Claire, because with these algorithms and everything that we're struggling with at the minute, I mean everybody's bombarding Facebook and every man and the dog, um, which is which is great. 
but with the algorithms at the minute, we 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 have certain people watching, and then they, they they'll catch up later. But Michelle has just shared a little uh, a little thing she's doing, which is lovely. So thanks, Michelle. And uh, my son loves it outdoors and enjoys learning outside uh, the home about nature and how things work. What I try and do is really small, right? What I try and do is some of the work home from school and take him out for the afternoon on a nature walk. Um, then he goes to the park for some fun time. Lovely. Okay. Perfect. 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 Found what and makes our child is, sing. Yeah. The thing is, when you're outside having that nature walk, like when, you know, after a few weeks when the schoolwork drifts off, yeah. <laughs> right? And, you know, it's great that you're doing that at the moment. And mornings, get that done in the mornings, relax in the afternoons. Perfect. That works for lots and lots of families. Um, but it can be that when you're outside, you know, classrooms don't have four walls. Guess what? You can actually do some of the home learning outside yeah, <laughs> you, know, yeah. you can you can be walking along and you can be you can be jumping in twos you can be learning vocabulary in twos you can be doing anything you want yeah, you don't yeah. have to be at home to learn yeah yeah i think that's so, important claire yeah, isn't it the other thing, yeah. right there's you know you can if if uh, you're practicing writing you can get a twig and you can write your letter in the in the earth yeah, yeah. you don't have to be using pen and paper yeah. So um, you can have all sorts of interesting conversations. You can leave voice notes on your phone. You can say, do you know what? Let's look that up when we get home. Pop it in your phone so you don't forget it. Yeah. Right? Um, so you can be out and about and learning, and especially for boys at the moment, and this isn't a sexist thing. We know boys learn differently to girls. Being physical and being outside and getting those big limbs moving and allowing them to express themselves physically, running, jumping, you know, all of that is yep. so good for them. It's so every child. But Absolutely. I'm really finding the boys more than the girls are struggling at the moment with so many online lessons one after the other. Yeah, yeah. Let them fall. Let them go outside and fall. Yeah. It's yeah. too hard. Yeah, yeah. Way too I hard. So, you know, so if you find there's a time and you'll know when the time is because the behavior will go. Yes. Yeah. So you'll know. Yeah. Right? You yeah. might as well just stop right there. Yeah. Um, and so just go outside. Just go outside. Yeah. Make a day. Yeah. Active learning. And, be, and most boys are active learners. I mean, I was and I were a, a big disruptor in class. I were disruptive. I were, I were <laughs> you know, distracting everybody. And I couldn't concentrate in class. I just couldn't. But. Uh, if the teacher gave me a task to do or told me to go and set the goalposts up or I just couldn't do academic work in class. I just couldn't. And there's many children like that. Um, but looking, looking at it now, bringing the outside, out, outside in and going outdoors as well to learn, there's there's lots of resources. Have you got anything to help parents? What have you, what have you got up in your armory? What have you got in your in your kit bag? What have you got, Claire, that? Because I'm after this, I've got lots of outdoor resources to share. I've got lots of uh, stuff to share where, where where parents can access. But what what have you got? Tell us tell us about what you've got. Sell yourself. Sell about your book. What you're doing. So the thing is, um, I my, my approach is perhaps a little bit more academic. Um, so in the Switched On Academy, there's basically three curricula, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah um, there's the core curriculum, which is the academics. It's the maths and the English, but it's done in a very different creative way, which I'll tell you about in a moment. Then there's the clever curriculum, which is the emotional stuff that you were talking about to raise the emotional quotient, to raise that emotional literacy, where we yeah. do mindfulness, meditation, journaling, all these kinds of things, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then there's the quantum curriculum, the third one, which is where we raise that uh, spiritual uh, development. So it's nothing to do with religion, but it's about tapping into your higher self. We talk about connecting, you know, with your passions and we talk about vision building and manifestation, the laws of the universe and all of that, right? Yes. Yeah. So yeah. there's those three different kind of uh, pillars you, and you can cherry pick whatever you want to learn. Yeah. Now, when it comes to the academics, with the literacy, for example, I'm running a challenge which I'm starting on Monday, the Little Authors Big Ideas Challenge, yeah. which I ran back in the summer. And I'll just show you my little book here. I'm so proud of this book. Yeah, oh, yeah. It's not just written by me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So in the Little Authors Big Ideas Challenge, and this worked for children who were dyslexic, dys dyspraxic, um, ASD, autistic, English as a second language, locked down at home, so anyone can do this. Yeah. Um, so 
I, in just six hours, they went from a blank piece of paper to a publishable story, which yes. is now published yep. on Amazon. These yep. children's stories are in this book, right? Yes. In this yep. book. These are their illustrations. Can you see? Yeah. Beautiful stories, right? I can't draw like that. It's not me. Yep. Lovely. And so, um, so this is called teaching literacy with soul. That's the point because it's it's not the normal way, not yes. the normal way. Lovely. Now, of course, I did give some specific training about techniques for writing, about punctuation, about grammar, you know, about how to write a story, of course, right? But then um, the children were able to take it away and do their own kind of writing. Not only that, in this book, there are curious questions you can ask. There are magical meditations. There are lined activities which might be nothing to do with writing stories. Yep. For example, create a piece of music. I've got here, I've just opened one, um, create positive affirmation statements. Um, you know, one person um, after uh, looking at one of these activities did yep. a comic strip. Yep. So it doesn't have to be um, writing stories. We've got writing poems, writing songs, diary yep. entries, um, lists, um, instructions. For yep, example, yep. there's one in here that, um, uh, ha let me find it, it's so sweet. It's for a recipe, right? You know everybody was cooking first yep, time yep, out. Yep. Right? I thought, okay, let's teach children how to write a recipe. Yes. But this is a recipe for happiness, a recipe for sunshine. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. So you've got, you know, a cup full of cuddles and all that kind of thing. So it's all positivity, all from the soul. You're saying, oh, hold the book up, Claire. Let's see the let's see the cover again. It looks awesome. So lollipops and rainbows. Yeah. So I've called it that because lollipops is kind of like our kind of childish reality now, yep. and then rainbows is like the bridge to the spiritual world. Yes, right? lovely. Yeah. Which is why we've got our magical unicorn on the front. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, all, Love all it. beautiful. Well so, done, Claire. Well yeah. done on creating that book. Great oh, job. I mean, just look. I mean, some of the pictures in here are just stunning. Lovely. Um, and the and, children have created them. The children have, have drawn them. What, yeah. what age group, uh, Claire? What age? So the children who took part in the Little Authors Big Ideas Challenge in the summer were, were from age 7 to 14. Yep. In countries all around the world, we had we had children coming in from uh, Dubai. We had children coming in from Bosnia. Children coming in from Ireland, from Scotland, wow. from all over the place. Nominal. We knew each other. No, no. Mixing, um, mixing yeah. with the languages and um, yeah, English is a second language. We had people, you know, it was the first time of lockdown, so some of their family situations were very, very tricky. Yep. Um, you know, but the parents absolutely loved it. The point is the parents learned so much as well. Yeah. Um, you know, and so you've got in the back here, you've got also, you've got all the teaching resources. If you wanted to teach your own child, yeah. This, you know, there's all the things here that you need. Of course, of course, yep, um, easy. So they can grab your book now right in lockdown. It's perfect. They can get it now. They can get it on Amazon. I got the children up to number 79. Let me find, I'll put the link in the comments after this, Claire, yes, so everybody can sure, go sure. on to Amazon and get your book. Yes, and during the launch, all the proceeds went to the NSPCC, yep. and uh, we got the children up to number 79, so they're in the top 100 published authors in 2020. That's what they achieved at the age of 8, 9, 10 Brilliant. during Brilliant. lockdown. Yeah. Well done, Claire, well done, and then that's what it's about. It's about thinking outside the box and yeah. you've got a great ethos there and, and what I've connected with is a great philosophy, a great ethos, great values and uh, they really align with mine as well. So it's, it's just, we wake up every morning, I spring out of bed and, you know, at Funder now, I mean, we've got a massive a massive team, the staff, they're all working in schools, teaching the Funder way and I've took time out of the office this lockdown to really focus on creating content to to really put my philosophy and ethos into books and resources and, and and ideas for parents to use at home who are locked down we just want to help i and we just want to to help children and that's all we want to do and you've mm -hmm. created a great book there and, and i'll leave it in the comments and there's so much more that you do as well claire um, but in terms of tips and resources i mean have you got any resources that you can you can ping across and i can leave yeah. them below afterwards? 
Yeah, I've got the I've got my seven top tips to to get your child switched on to learning. And when I say switched on to learning, that doesn't have to be academic learning. That's basically switched on. Get them switched back on, all right? Yeah. To just yeah. being curious about anything. Um, so I've got some a little you know free downloadable PDF, quick and easy to read. It's not like overly complicated and you know swamping you with information. It's literally seven top tips. If you do this, 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 yeah. you know, you'll be amazed at how you shift that um, you know, you switch them on basically. You you yes. switch them on. Lovely. So um, I'm more than happy to share that with people. No problem at all. Fantastic, Claire. Fantastic. So what can we do then? What can we do together? How can we how can we help each other? What can we do to get more children engaged, more parents engaged who need us right now? What can what can we do? Because well, we've got I so many what tools. Would be, what would be fabulous? So I'm doing in the home education hub this week i've had a spotlight on dads so you'd be welcome to come in and talk to my community about your experience of fathering during lockdown right fathering during lockdown which is because most people you know most mums are quite good at having a chat about that right whereas dads yeah. might not be <laughs> so yeah. i wanted to just put the spotlight on dads for that that's the first thing the second thing is that i'm also having a spotlight on health um in the home education hub yeah. And I'm going to have a weekly segment. I've got an amazing friend. She's coming in tomorrow. Action Amanda. She's going to be doing things on a weekly basis on a Monday morning, just for half an hour for the fives and under, age five and under. Yeah. Now you could come in, Kieran, on a, on a time that suits you. And you could do a, an activity that you're yeah. showing up however often you want to, once a week, twice a week, you know, twice a month, once a month, whatever. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Where we say, right, you know, this is the fun away with Kieran. And you, you give us a little taster of an activity that you can do. But everybody kind of goes, oh, brilliant. We know, we know Kieran's popping in. And this, for example, is perfect for five to 11 year olds. Lovely, got you, got you. Yeah, fantastic, Claire. That sounds brilliant, and I think we should hold each other to that because that's all been my life. Is just give, 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 giving all the, since I started the the business and and back in the day. Um, but yeah, I, I feel that being a dad in lockdown is is really tough, and you you got me then really on the spot because I feel guilty being a, a dad myself at the minute right now because I'm hustling and bustling in the business, which is which is nonstop. We had the little break over Christmas, but throughout the year, it's been non-stop. And I see my boys at, at Christmas, spent some quality time. The phone just stopped. And luckily, my boys are early years, so they're, they're not at school yet, fortunately. So uh, my missus is a key worker. She's a physiotherapist. Um, so she works with orthopedic children who, who's who's really struggling right now as well. Um, and and I've, I've just, mum's spending a lot of time at home with the children at the minute. And I'm feeling they're not at that age where... I spend quality time with them. I spend quality in half an hour, an hour with them, weekends, evenings, I bath them. I make sure I'm home for the bath as much as I can. But mm. being a dad, I feel guilty, to be honest with you, Claire, because I'm in the office, I'm working, I'm grafting, uh, I see my boys at weekend. But like you said, I'm 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 trying to provide. I'm trying to put a, keep a roof over our heads. I've, mm. I, you know, I'm trying to is, inspire them to be the best they can be. And mm. hopefully I'm a... I will be a good role model for that. But I feel guilty because mums, I'm not being sexist when I say this, I don't know how you do it. I don't know how mums do it. They're incredible. How they give birth, they're incredible. <laughs> how they're at home sweating around the clock because they are, they graft. And and absolutely, how, how you can stay. I did it one day the other day staying at home with my boys, and I'll be quiet in a minute. And I stayed at home the other day with my boys. And, and it's probably the first time because mum doesn't really trust me to, have a full day with them. I have half a day. I have half a day, here. and I, and I run a kids' children's childcare business. And and uh, I spent a full day with them, and and I got all the resources. I was doing this. I was doing that. We went sledging dead early in the morning, and I was getting them outside. I was doing all this stuff, and it got to the afternoon, and I was like, <laughs> and I'm like, and they're watching TV. I'm guilty, you know. They they, they put on a TV show what they're watching, and it gave me a minute. The little one was in bed, and I was like shattered and i had two hours left before <laughs> mum come home <laughs> and i was like it's just a struggle i, know. I used to go to work for a rest kieran that's me at the minute <laughs> it's easier to go to work than it is to be at home with the children for sure like You're anyone right. will tell you that yeah. um but it's about balance right and yeah. so you know just 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 
you know, box that guilt thing for one moment. It's about balance. And for solo parenting, you know, we're doing we're doing two people's jobs. Yes. Yeah. So so you have to provide and you have to show up for your work, but you have to have boundaries around that. And if somebody's calling you after the time or they've let you down, oh, can you talk now? No. No. I can't because now yeah. it's family time. Yep. And so exactly. you, you segment and you really are firm around those. I, think I did that with you, Claire. I did that with you. You, you did. You said, can you meet after five? And I went, no. And this year I've said, no, it's family time. That's it. You've yeah. got to stand in your no. Yes. I call it standing in your loving no. Yeah. Yeah. Right? No longer are we yes people. Yeah. We stand in our loving no and we say, we don't say, when I say no longer are we yes people, I mean, yes, we say yes to opportunities, but we don't just say yes to everything to be people pleasers, right? You stand yes, in yes, your yes, no. Yes, yes. You know, so so you go, okay, well, you know, um, I don't know, maybe eight to nine in the morning is my quiet time for coffee, meditation and journaling. There'll be parents on here cracking up at that. <laughs> <laughs> yep. um, mine are older. They don't go up to 12. So I can do that. Yep. Your time will come. Don't worry. Um, so, you know, so segment your time. Now, if my partner starts talking to me about his day, between eight and nine in the morning where I'm getting into my day and I'm easing myself in journey. I don't like it. I'm like, hold on a minute. I don't need all your shit about your clients. Yeah. I'm not interested. Yeah, just say no. Yeah, yeah. Like no, boundaries around that, boundaries, Ooh, right? And you can have boundaries with your children. You can say, no, this is daddy's time in the office. Yeah. I'll come out and play with you in half an hour. Yeah. But then when you're out playing with them in half an hour, you're not on your phone doing your emails. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm guilty of that as well. You know, I'm being real. I'm being honest. People see so us as positive. It's about boundaries. Yeah. If you yeah. have to be boundaries, it will alleviate the guilt. Yes, yeah. Because yeah. you know then you can say, well, you know what? You're encroaching on my work time. That will encroach on your play time. Yes, yeah, yeah. And that's it. And, and, and that's it. So the day, look, look at this, Claire, right? Tomorrow morning, just, just before we go, um, the parents have got a full day of, of home educating, homeschooling. Some parents are following it by the book. Some parents are, it doesn't matter what they do. They do the best they can do. But what tips would you give them to the parent working up tomorrow to attack the day? Um, if, if it was you as a parent, walk me through what your day would look like, homeschooling your child, going back in time. Yes, yeah, so what I would do is I would get prepared the night before, <laughs> right? Yep. I'd have everything, put, because I'm a teacher, I'm sorry, I'm organized. I'd have everything like kind of printed out, like, okay, so what does, you know, what would Oscar need to do? What would Alex need to do? And what would I need to do? Yep. So I'd, I'd get it, I'd get my little timetable printed, because I'm crap in the morning, I've already just told you that. Yep. I can't get up and just be like, yes, I need yep. to get it all set out the day before. And yep. so I would, and also I, I have zones, I'd have zones in the house. So in, for example, the dining room, yep. it, there's, there's no phones. Right. Or in the kitchen, when we're eating, no phones. In the office is where we'd have our computers, our phones, everything going on, right? Yep. So, you know, if, and then what I would do, looking at that timetable is like, okay, so if Alex needs quiet time to show up for his online live lesson from nine to 9.30, mm -hmm. I won't start my work because I'm going to be with Oscar from 9 to 9.30 to make sure he doesn't disturb his brother. Yes. Yeah. Right? So if we need to do that, then do I need to get up at 7 so that I can do a bit of work before I need to help Alex with his work? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So I might get up earlier and I might prepare breakfast with them and then I would have the activity for Oscar already set up. Go and sit with Alex, make sure he's logged on. That's it. He started. Take his little brother away. Do something with him. So Alex gets his online learning. Oscar gets his time with mummy. Then after that, I'll let them do whatever they want so that I can spend an hour or two doing my work. And then it would be lunchtime. Yes. Yep. Yep. Got you. So yep. it's about not pleasing everybody. Yep. And it's about having those expectations and boundaries and getting organized. And the Brilliant. more children you've got, or the more people in the house you've got, the more organised you've got to be. Yes, yeah, yeah. And if anybody's got any questions watching this before we go, I mean, we've got a couple of minutes. I always like, just, I know it's a lot of time, Claire. I always like to finish bang on an hour. That's and fine. Uh, I, th I think it's a lovely time, a quick hour session. For parents who's got time, they probably haven't. 
Um, <laughs> that's why we haven't got many watchers. They'll watch this back later tonight. That's fine. Uh, we'll email it out to, to my list as well. But the fact is, is that um, if, if anybody's got any problems, any struggles, any when it comes to home schooling, I'll call it, or home learning, or engaging, and let's call it entertaining your child, because let's face it, well, that's I what we're going to be. I call it edutainment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Entertaining your child. Just think of it like that. But the, the five tips I'd give, Claire, and, and the, I spoke about these the other day and I, I just put these together. If if I were home educating and, and doing this now, with, like most parents, mums, dads are doing right now at home, probably 80% is going to be mums, let's face it. Um, I'd extend their holiday. So what I would do is extend the Christmas holiday for the rest of this week and get, like you said, get planned, get organised and, and f extend the holiday this week Make the most of the snow that's up here in the northwest, and and get out and enjoy the fresh air, the snow, um, and then obviously I I believe in unstructured and structured learning, but I would have some kind of structure because yeah. obviously everybody needs to be planned, like you said. Um, when I say you know. plan, that's the thing that can trigger some people. You know, for people who think, oh well, you know, we just we just go with the flow, and yeah, well, yeah. that's still a plan. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, that's still a plan. plan go with the flow so yeah. you you can plan nothing yeah right but but understand that that's what you're doing and therefore if you get to the end of the nothing and nothing's happened don't get cross yeah 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 that's what yeah. you planned yeah no that's so if it you're planning a, a, a bit of an unstructured learning session in the afternoon mm -hmm. just be open to whatever happens that's it that's it and that's sure. where the expectations come in, you see. But what you can't do then is get cross with your children because they're like playing up or demanding your attention and you need to be going and doing something else. If you need to go and do something else, structure something for them. Yeah. And yeah. they will be able to get on and do it. Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's it. And I, I'd, and what I would do is, is, is use people like yourself, use people like me, like others out there who's, who's sharing ideas at the minute and build just a just an ideas bank. There's there's lots of free resources online on Instagram, on so Pinterest. Many. So many. So uh, many. I mean, Twinkle is an amazing resource. Yep. Um, as I say, I'm doing a writing challenge next week. I can take your kids off your hand for an hour every day next week. Right? Next if you week, need to yep. do something from eleven till twelve. If you need to schedule in your meetings, <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you need to batch cook, right? And yep. prepare yep. food and put it in the freezer, like yep. Sign them up, and you, and I'll take them off your hands. <laughs> yes, that's, you'll have to send us the link for, for for that, Claire. You'll have to send us the link for everything, and I'll make sure I put it below this feed so when people watch, they can they can re refer to it. So obviously, tip four would be preparation, and obviously, tip five, working together. So mm -hmm. I was thinking more of creating. Uh, I know, I think you have already got this, but but just like a a virtual meet up, create up for, for a hub or a a resource where people like ourselves, parents, professionals, we all meet up and collaborate and we all have like a, a I don't know, a, a two minute or a five minute mic where we all just pass the mic and share what's working right now, where tips, advice, resources, um, and, and answer Q and A as well at the end. That's so, a brilliant idea. I mean, there are, there are several people um, who I'm connected with, you know, who are parenting coaches and, you know, all sorts of people in the parenting space um, and the education space. And, um, yeah, that's, that's definitely something that, that um, you know, I'd be more than happy to participate in or help you to organise as well. Brilliant, Claire. Brilliant. So I think we've got, have we got just a comment popped up here? It's hard work. Here we go. Um, Matt said, uh, great to listen to you both, some fantastic tips and actually good to know I look at this homeschooling in much the same way as you both. That's lovely, isn't it? Yes, well, that's great, Matt. Thank you for your comment on that. And I can see, you know, that, um, so presumably I'd love to know if you're working from home and I actually, as a dad, because I've got my spotlight on dad at the moment, so I'm really thinking about you, dad. <laughs> I want to know, Matt, do you feel, pop in the comments below, you know, do you feel some of that dad guilt? that Kieran was talking about, right? Because mums talk about guilt all the time. And it's really interesting to hear it from your perspective. And have you felt that, Matt, some of that dad guilt? And if you have, ha you know, that's fine. But how have you overcome that? What did you do to uh, to feel less guilty? And do you think putting these boundaries in place, you know, having this loving no, having these boundaries, having some structure around what's working time and what's family time, 
you know, is that a good idea? Like, has that how, has that worked out for you? I'd love to know your experience around that. And parents' hiccups as well, Claire. Lovely. Parents' hiccups, parents' struggles. Uh, comment below after them. You know, maybe we could just do a quick live every week and just, just what That's it's called, right. it's networking. Networking, yeah. sharing. Could send some things in ahead of time. And, yeah. you know, we could we could feel into those and talk into those. Yep. No, I know I'm on your Facebook, so I've got two minutes left. And I just want to share, Claire, um, I'm on your Facebook page, is, is the book I've created, which is this uh, Fund of Greatness, uh, How to Unlock Your Child's Full Potential. Well, in this book is the, is pretty much the fund away. It's the physical education, health, well-being and personal development. So if children want a break away in the afternoon from from the core, the academics, the learning, whatever, if they're getting destructive, if they're getting if they're getting bouncing off the walls, mm -hmm. then they can easily turn to, to to one or two of these these activities. There's 177 activities inside this book, Claire, and um, there's loads of free ones on our website that people parents. It's on Amazon. This book as well. Um, but for example, um, this movement dice here we've created. There's lots of quotes in there. Eat like you love your body. But this dice here, you see it? Mm -hmm. um, that's a movement dice that we use. Love that. Um, so children use the fine motor skills to cut out the dice yeah. and then they stick it, glue it, and, and then yeah. they can roll it. And they do the movements around the home. So there's 177. Yeah. And the last thing, uh, there's mindfulness stuff in there. There's 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 emotions. Mm -hmm. um, but the, the last thing is, it's like all the, the stuff you said about affirmations, positivity. Oh, I was going to say about the positivity jar. That's a fabulous yep. thing to do. Positivity jar there as well. And there's, there's, there's some traditional ones in there um, and lots of quotes as well. Um, so I've got uh, some quotes as well here. I'll show you a quick quote, uh, if I can find one. Um, but there's a quick quote all over. Here's, here's a good one as well. This is important for all parents watching. You don't have to be perfect to be amazing. That's it. Totally. That's the key. That's the key. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Okay. One little thing that just popped into my head seeing that jar, and this is something that many people said to me during the last lockdown. They were like, oh my God, my child is so bored. And people are saying, you know, we set up these activities and they do them for two minutes. Like, yeah. they get yeah. bored, right? Yeah. Now, here's a really great tip that you could do. Um, what you could do is you could have a jar and it's your boredom jar. And yeah. rather than putting in positive comments, what you do Jordan. is you put in activities. Yeah. Right. So if you and, and you can sort this out beforehand and you just this is when you're having your conversation and you're like, right, you know, if you get bored, what's something you'd love to do? You know, would it be painting? Would it be monopoly? Would it be whatever? Yeah. Right. Card games, running outside. Yeah. And children of different ages will put different things in. And so yeah. you create little slips for them. Yeah. Put them all in the boredom jar. Yeah. And then when you get all the stuff, oh, I don't want to do this, so boring, you know. Yeah. What yeah. Is that? Yeah. Like, sure, fine, no worries. Let's have a 10 minute break. Off you go to the boredom jar, pick something out, go off and do it. That's it, Claire. That's Not what we need. You. Not necessarily with you, go off and do yeah. it. That's and then, what parents you know, want. You know, and when they go, oh, I don't want to do that, it's like, well, you chose it. <laughs> yes. That's, That's what parents need. That's what parents need. Not a not a textbook from school. Not a reading book from school. They can read. They can read from home. It's these in, interactive enrichment activities children need right now to help them grow and yeah. unlock their full potential, like what we're trying to achieve. And boredom. Now, here's the thing. Uh, I truly believe that allowing children to be bored is one of the best gifts you can give them. Because what yeah. does it create? It creates problem solving. It's creativity, yes. right? It creates that scientific mind, those curious questions, those philosophical conundrums, yeah. right? Creativity. Your board. My goodness, yeah. you're a child. You're full of untapped potential and unique and wonderful possibilities. How can yeah. you be bored? Right? Let your child be free. Yes. Let them be bored and they yeah. will create something which is in, in line with their passions. Yes, absolutely, Claire, absolutely. How good was that, by the way? Is there, is there anything you want to ask? I mean, what's the summary? What's the summary of all this? I mean, we've just jumped on live, nothing was planned. We just thought we'd have a chat. And uh, I hope people's enjoyed watching this. If they watch it back, leave a comment, share it. But you what see. do you think? Summarise, what do you think about this, this chat we've had? Well, I've loved it. <laughs> I mean, I always like,
like talking with like-minded people and you know also reaching out to communities and sharing my experience my expertise uh, you know it might not be for everyone but i would just encourage people to take away what they need to discard what isn't relevant and to um you know to start this dialogue you know to share what is working for you right now we've shared some of our tips but also in the comments below share what's working for you yeah. what have you done that's really been good and also share what you did that was really hard and didn't work for you because that's just as important because yes. then you can start to pick out what do my family love doing might be yes. some of the school work might not be doesn't matter yep. do That's what it. you love and you will stay healthier your vibration will be higher your emotional resilience will be higher yep. right you'll yep. be less likely to catch bugs and things yep. so yep. If you do what you love and you're raising that vibration and you're interacting with each other in a different way yep that's the way forward. My hair is starting to grow listening to how positive you are, Claire. And I love speaking. <laughs> you know, I, love speaking. So I know we're banging the drum and we're positive and we're like, woohoo. And people are like at home right now, like, oh. <laughs> that I, and it's like, I don't want to hear Kieran's bald head again on Facebook Live. I don't want to hear. I'm fed up of seeing Kieran pop up. Uh, but hey, we found our purpose and what's wrong with that? Nothing wrong with it. Any call to actions, Facebook groups? books resources well, people are welcome to join the home education hub I put you know and there's it's all going on in there as well so brilliant brilliant yeah. claire well thanks so much and uh, i'll leave a little video to to just to see and and tell people about my home education uh we'll get well, you in there kieran i'll connect yeah. with you after this we'll get you in there brilliant good to hear from you claire and thanks <laughs> so much and I'll, I'll check in with you after okay no worries. Take care, everyone. See you soon and put your name in the replay. We'll get back in touch with you later on. That's it. You're a good and clear. Have a positive <laughs> evening. Take care, everyone. Bye. Take care. Bye-bye. So that was Claire. What an awesome lady. Absolutely awesome lady from, um, I don't know where she's from, actually, Claire. I think she's from, uh, she sounded like she was from down south. A really positive lady. If you need resources, activities, come and hunt for us. Check out the comments below. Um, and yeah, we've I've put a Facebook group together. It's growing and it's got my passion all behind it. Have a watch of this video and it's packed with free resources to help with your home education and schooling. I'll see you all soon. Bye bye. The desire of every parent, home educator or teacher is to have a happy, confident child who grows and is ready and prepared to succeed in life. I'm Kieran, the founder of Funda. My organisation is multi-award winning, Ofsted registered, voted the North West UK top 30 most exciting companies and is officially recognised by Her Majesty the Queen. Funder makes a positive difference and empowers children's lives every day. This Funder Greatness private Facebook group will provide a place to work together to unlock your child's full potential, help your child grow in confidence, be more resourceful, active, happy and resilient children who are ready to succeed in life. Providing parents, home educators and teachers with an arena to share resources, activities and support each other's aspirations when teaching and learning from home. Share your pictures, work, progress, ideas and resources with others because caring is sharing. Now is the most important time to support the COVID generation to recover, catch up, learn, make progress and recover from a year like no other. Welcome to all our Funda Greatness members, old and new, Say hello, introduce yourself and help others. The most engaging member will win free activities and resources that will make a positive difference to your child's life.